What's going on? My name is Michael B. Jordan, and I am this year's Sexiest Man Alive. The people said it. The people said it. I think I'm gonna get the most grief from everybody. Uh, from my agents, to my best friends, uh, you know, any, any, any one of my, my, uh, my guy friends, everybody in the group chat. <laughs> the group chat is gonna go crazy when this comes out. I mean, the jokes aren't gonna stop, so it's gonna be pretty, uh, it's gonna be entertaining, trust me. <laughs> what went through my head when I found out? Uh, it, it was a cool feeling. Uh, it was something that, you know, obviously, other people have made so many comments and jokes about, you know, you know, whenever you announce who the guy is, everybody has their comments and they have, you know, things they want to say about it. And uh, they always made that joke at me, like, Mike, it's the one thing you're probably not going to get. And it was just like, I was like, yeah, whatever, I kind of brush it off. So it was, uh, it was a good feeling. It was, it was cool. It's cool. It's a, good, it's a good club to be a part of. I think my mom is the most excited just because, you know, she's been following it you know i think religiously for a long time um you know my grandmother my, my aunt you know I, I think uh you know when my grandmother was alive it's something that she collected you know and then you know my mom naturally you know uh, reads it a lot and collects them and then, you know my aunts as well so i think a lot of the, the older women in my family are, are definitely proud of this one this is one that they're definitely going to have um a special place for <laughs> Uh, when did I have an awkward phase? I think a lot of my childhood was awkward. I remember maybe, what grade was that? I had a chipped tooth phase in the front, you know? He used to call me Mr. Chippy. Sister used to tease me all the time, like he's had a chipped tooth, and that went for a little bit. Of course, mom wanted to take holiday photos right around that, just immortalize that look. Thanks, mom. Uh, <laughs> Then uh, I think I think right around the time Hardball came around, when I started shooting the movie Hardball, it was right when I was growing my hair out. So it was always that awkward stage between, you know, a low cut like this and like getting braids, because I think that was like a rites of passage also, like in my community growing up, was definitely growing your hair out and getting braids and locks and stuff like that. So that was definitely a, a awkward um, phase for me. I would describe myself in high school as hardly there you know I think I was I was always back and forth to New York auditions I tried to have as much of a, a normal high school life as I could and still try to be a working actor at the same time which is always a, a difficult balance so I still you know, ran track played on the basketball team you know went to most school functions so I think I was a I don't know a little mischievous a little rebellious I think at that age you're like you're working and going to school, so it was kind of that juxtaposition of, of situations that made it a little interesting and spicy at times. Best advice my parents has given me. Follow your gut. Always follow your gut, trust your instinct. That, that's something that I really live my life by. Um, day to day, moment to moment. Um, I think I'm a pretty intuitive person and, and just trust your intuition. Yeah, that's, that's what's gotten me this far. No, Don't go. I would say I, I first started feeling really comfortable in my own skin, maybe right around Fruitville Station. I'm scared. Scared of what? I hear guns outside. After Sundance, after we sold the movie, and I really started seeing the impact of that character because it was a lot of Oscar Grant that I felt like he was me, it could have been me. Um, and on a professional side, it was, I wanted to know if I can carry a film. You know, like so much of my life has been the entertainment business at a very young age in one form or another, acting, you know, leading up into this point, this, this pivotal moment of like, are you leading man or not? You know what, baby? Those just firecrackers. You're safe inside with your cousins. What about you, Daddy? Me? Maybe I'm gonna be fine. And I think that movie for me answered a lot of questions and also allowed me to 
Yeah, just growing into my own in a lot of different ways. I mean, spiritually, I think I started to, you know, be a, a little bit more curious, um, educate myself on, on on certain matters that, you know, just felt more, uh, just felt more myself, walked a little taller. I think the secret to confidence, and my confidence now, is I think fully realizing that you can't make everybody happy. And it's always going to be something said about something that you you did or you're doing, uh, regardless of your intentions. And sometimes you just got to trust the universe. You know, you got to trust the process. You got to just um, believe in yourself and do um, what you feel is really right. And if you feel um, good in the, in the decisions that you're making, I think that 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 adds up and that builds confidence. The thing that makes me happy is my family, honestly, family and friends. Like that, just I am beyond wealthy in my friendships and relationships. Like that is a fact. And outside of that, I have that faith that one day, yes, that. I, I want a family, you know, I want children, um, want a wife. You know, having people who are married around me who, you know, have families and, you know, children, you know, a running theme is like, you know when you know, right? And it's one of the most frustrating things to hear as somebody who's saying, like, what do you mean, you know, I'd be, I kind of thought like four or five times and that, was, that didn't really work out that, too well for me. But uh, I think timing is everything also. And right now I'm like, in the matrix, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's such a tunnel vision with the things that I want to achieve. So it's kind of tough right now when I guess my first choice is always work, but, but having a family is definitely important. I think a perfect date night for me would be the freedom to go wherever I want it. In public. not worry about paps or this or that or what the next news story is gonna be about this or whatever the case may be. Enjoy somebody's company. Go for a drive. Dope playlist. Drive somewhere just for dessert. I'm definitely a movie guy. Movie and ride the vibe for the rest of the night. I'm most grateful for my mentality the way I think and look at things. I think it's a mixture of my mom and my dad. It's the way I process things. I, I really appreciate it. So yeah, really thankful for that. Biggest aha moment. Biggest aha moment for me is when I realized that money won't make you happy. Will not. It sounds cliche. You know, you, you hear people say it all the time. As a person who has checked off a lot of the things on my list that I can vividly remember being like, if I just had that, I'll be cool. It doesn't make you happy, you know? And I think that was the, the journey that I really started to, I really started to set myself on uh, to do the inner work. That's what it's about. You know, it's the inner work. It's about the journey, you know? Cause you're always gonna get someplace and be like, what's next? So I think the moment that I really realized like, whoa, it's not about a number. It's not about that. Um, you can still be ambitious and, and want things and, you know, hit certain material numbers and stuff like that, but it's not gonna make you happy. I think legacy is something that I do think about a lot. I've always wanted to leave behind something that would last longer than my physical body would. So wherever that is, you know, um, real impact you know how do we how do we make change where can I be used at in order to make the most impact how do I use my voice we're looking at you know you know two people in particular that had a real impact on me and Kobe and Chadwick and you always look at your own mortality after something like that and to see the impact that 
they've had on people on this world is truly incredible. I think they really changed people. They really impacted how other people lived their lives. And that's the biggest, that's one of the biggest honors you can have, you know? So, you know, I don't have children yet, you know, but when I do have something to leave behind in that type of way for them to move that and push that ball forward, I think is really important. So I think just, you know, inspiring, but not in the cliche way of using the word, I think in, a, in the real sense of that, um, it's kind of what I want the legacy to be.